This summer, crack open a cold one of the coolest new beverage, bean-based beer. Brewed with the finest naturally grown soybeans. Enjoy the smooth taste of plant estrogen. The beaniest beer in the world. Always smooth, always refreshing, always beans. Bean beer. Grab life by the beans. I've been really wanting to brew some beer lately. This winter, I tried to get a head start and attempted to grow some barley indoors. Unfortunately, some pest issues and negligence from the rest of the team while I was gone on vacation, that ended up being a dead end. I've since replanted a literal beer garden this spring, but I want to brew some beer now. So I wanted to try fermenting something I have grown and have a lot of leftover, beans. So after my experiment of turning bean starch into sugar and using it to make jelly beans, let's go one step further and see if it's possible to take this sugar and brew beer out of beans. Previous experimental brewing I've done using crabgrass didn't turn out so great. Oh god, Ugh. it smells worse than it tastes, but it also doesn't taste good. So I decided to turn to the head brewer at Northern Brewing, who previously helped us brew some beer three years ago. It's only been three years. I know. <laughs> Has it been that long already? <laughs> so. Wow. I'm here with Brad at Northern Brewer. I want to make some bean beer. So I prepped some soybeans and some mung beans, roasted them, ground them, soaked them, and then add an enzyme to hopefully turn it into a sugary water that we can try and ferment into something that's at least somewhat palatable. Well, I guess we'll find out on the palatable part. This is quite the interesting experiment, um, but yeah, I mean, you can pretty much use enzymes to convert anything containing a high amount of starches into sugars and then ferment those sugars, thus making an alcoholic beverage. The way it stands right now, this is made 100% from beans, so this would technically be considered a wine must instead of a wort, which is beer before fermentation, which is grain-based. We can ferment it by itself just to see how it turns out, make a, a, a bean wine. Yeah. And we can also add some barley malt extract, a little bit of hops, boil it up, pitch some yeast at it, and that will technically be a beer because it does have the proper ingredients for a beer. Have you ever heard of a bean beer before? I can't say that I have. Brewers get a little crazy with the things they put in their <laughs> beers, especially these days that you can find some really weird things out there. Uh, but beans is not one I've ever heard of. Um, if anybody out there has, drop it in the comments. It'd be kind of fun to know if there's a bean beer out there. Before we get started, we took a hydrometer reading of the bean juice. This weighs the density of the solution. And with the reading after the fermenting, we can learn how much of the denser sugars have been converted to less dense alcohol. So it worked. That is fermentable. Throw a little yeast in there, we're gonna have a beverage. I think the first thing we should do is get the bean juice into the kettle here, and we'll get a flame on it to get it heating up to boiling. And then once we get it pretty warm, we will add in our malt extract, boil it, add some hops. And there we go, now we have the requisite ingredients to make it a beer. We've got barley malt in there, we have hops, and we are boiling, so we'll let this go for a little while. While that heats up, we'll set up the straight soybean juice for fermenting into a wine. Bean wine. First by sanitizing the fermenter and treating the bean juice with metabisulfate to kill anything else that might possibly ferment in it. All we simply have to do is pour that into our fermenter, add our yeast, and then it's a waiting game. Wine making, brewing, always a waiting game. And we just dump the yeast in, sprinkle it right on the surface. All right, and once this has a chance to kind of rehydrate a little bit into the bean juice, we will go ahead and add a dose of the yeast nutrient. This is called Fermade O. It is an organic source of nitrogen and a few other ingredients in here. And what that does is give the yeast everything they need nutritionally to have a healthy fermentation and to avoid any strange off flavors that we might get from stressed out yeast. We are going to add three grams of the Fermade O and we're going to add this once now. And if you want to do the honors and dump that on in, when it's a third of the way done, we are going to dose it again. We will do that likely in the next few days. With the beer wine ready to ferment, it's back to finishing up the bean beer. All right, we are just about done with the boil, so let's get our chiller in there. 
And what that will do is allow it enough time at a high enough temperature to sanitize the chiller so we don't have any possible contamination issues. All right, so our wort is finally chilled down. We're just under 70 degrees, which is pretty much perfect for nail fermentation. So our next step are going to be remove the chiller from the kettle. We will dump that into the fermenter, add yeast, and we're pretty much done for the day. So this is a, uh, an American ale yeast. It's very clean, neutral. It doesn't give off a lot of fermentation-derived flavors. Uh, so we'll be able to really taste the character of the beans and the barley and the hops. We've technically, legally now made beer. Once the yeast goes in, it is considered beer, even though it hasn't fermented. We will let these ferment for about a week or so, and we will get them packaged, carbonated, and tasted. And the hope is that it doesn't suck. Give me the real test. <laughs> Leaving the beer and wine to ferment, we returned a few weeks later to check on the results. So we're back now, and it's been fermenting for about four days. This one is the, the straight bean juice. You know, we didn't add any, anything extra to this. This one is the one that we added the malt extract and hops to, so this is our bean beer. Well, I'd say everything is looking pretty darn good. Uh, if you can tell on tape on the very bottom here, uh, we do have a nice layer of yeast that is indicative of a good fermentation. They actually cleared up pretty nicely. I think everything is looking good. We just won't know until we taste it. <laughs> All right, let's get these in kegs and taste them up. And then sparkling bean wine. Sounds appetizing. Boom, sparkling bean wine. All right, and if you can see here on the hydrometer, we have a specific gravity of 1.000. We have an alcohol percentage of 3.94. So not exactly a very strong wine. However, we have an alcoholic beverage. And then the beer version, well, that got down to 1.002. So that's pretty low for a beer, not too shabby. That came out to 7.6%. Now we'll get some carbonation in them and then the fun part. Drinking it. Exactly. All right, let's do it. Justin, are you ready to sample some sparkling bean wine? All right, now by the magic of movies, we have carbonated final product. Um, and here to help us taste, we have Justin. He works here at Northern Brewer in our IT department. Andy gets the big one. Let's try it out, let's see what we got. I'm actually surprised at the clarity. No, it's not bad on it, it's kind of toasty. It's like... Taste. Yeah, yeah, it's a little bit. Peanut butter that's been left out for three days. It's a little more tart than I would have expected. It's, it's slightly tart. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's actually kind of refreshing. Yeah, Summer Slammer. Surprisingly better than <laughs> I thought it was going to be. Pleasantly surprised. <laughs> wow. I'll admit, when you asked me if I wanted to taste weird things on Tuesday, I uh, <laughs> did not expect it to be good, so. <laughs> it's it's bad. weird, but good. <laughs> that is surprisingly tasty. Yeah. I will actually probably finish this. That's uh, <laughs> Cheers. Cheers to that. <laughs> So that was the one we expected to be worse. This one should probably be better. Let's try the beer version. It has a wonderful pale ale kind of color to it. Man, if I were judging this, I'd give it a three out of three for appearance. It ripped through the sugars, dropped out clear, and we have a beautiful looking bean pale ale. <laughs> Cheers, fellas. Cheers. Ooh. Nice nose on it. Mm-hmm. That's not bad. No. That's <laughs> all right. <laughs> BJCP, if you're listening, we need a bean beer category because this is the, the next rage. It's gonna, it's gonna overtake North, Northeast IPAs. I'm really surprised with this. I bet you you could actually enter this and score decently in a competition. I was really not expecting this. Nice work, gentlemen. Yeah, I'll come back again if you make more. That's, uh... So what would you rate this if you had to judge it? I mean, if I were to bring it as almost like an American pale ale type, yeah. it's, it's a healthy score, I mean. Anything you do to improve this? More beans, maybe? Yeah. Man. The sky is the limit here. I'm, I'm, I'm blown away. I really am. I'm gonna try something less good. My uh, crabgrass beer. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, it tastes gross. I will absolutely try some. It's like over a year old. Ooh, vintage crabgrass beer. Yes. Oh, listen to that hiss. Woo wee. Got a little gusher. There we go. It's effervescent. Oh, it's got some crabgrass seeds. Yeah, a bonus. I'm gonna drink some crabgrass seeds and have crabgrass growing in my belly. There's already enough in my yard. All right, let's, let's do it. <laughs> Thanks, Andy. <laughs> Cheers. The nose is less pleasant. This is less pleasant than the beans. <laughs> yes. It's a little diapery. It smells like walking through the garden aisle at Home Depot. All right, here goes. 
The nose is actually worse than the taste. Well, Again, a little tart. I mean, it's it's grassy. It's, it is. It's it's what you would as you would expect. Yeah. <laughs> what would give it the smell? Roundup. <laughs> that is weird. This one I'm not gonna finish. Yeah, no. Sorry, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> so bean success, crabgrass, not less so successful. We had to try one weird thing today. Yeah. If you hadn't told me that first beer was bean-based, I wouldn't have known. Well, Justin, thank you very much for being the guinea pig. Thanks for having me. Happy to drink some bean beer. Sorry Don't invite me back for the crabgrass beer. <laughs> Thanks for helping put this all together, helping me brew this up. Glad we got good results. I'm, uh, I'm astonished. I really am. We were so impressed with the flavor, we decided to bottle a few and submit it to this year's Minnesota State Fair and see what kind of rating it gets. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.